I'm going to start with a couple of screens. The first one is really just to set the context around what we are about to see. And what we are about to see is essentially an open source Teams app template. If you've not used one, uh, the link at the bottom will take you to uh, the page that lists all of those app templates that have been built out by the Teams engineering group and rolled out as open source available on GitHub. Um, the intent here is for us to showcase best practices, kind of the power of what's possible. Um, these app templates uh, use different tooling behind the scenes. Some are Azure bots, there is custom LOB apps, there is uh, app templates using Power Apps, Power Automate. The one I'm actually about to show you is built on Power Apps and Power Automate. It's essentially a power platform based app template for Teams. Uh, but you know, obviously, GitHub means open source, take it, make it your own, customize it, personalize it. Uh, feel free to use it for your organization or your teams as you see fit. We're about to look at building access templates. And for those of you, and again, you know, in current scenario, I think everyone's gotten impacted. Everyone's working remotely in some sense has gotten affected from a working standpoint. There are a lot of organizations that were planning to bring employees back into those office locations and were looking for a tool to help them safely bring them back. If for those of you who keep on uh, keep track of some of the app templates we roll out, uh, the one of the early ones we rolled out to support COVID-19 crisis was the crisis communications app back in March, and and that was really more about more informational uh, employees being able to uh, update their status, letting the teams know where they were, uh, companies to send down information down to the employees on kind of the policies, updates on building access, and so on. Um, what morphed from there was, hey, that is all great, but now as we are bringing people back into locations, how do we do that safely? How do we control who's going to be at the building at any point in time? What should be the occupancy threshold? Like if, I, if my building used to accommodate a thousand people before this crisis hit, and now I don't want more than 500 people, how do I control that? Uh, how should I, you know, as my facilities teams restructure the layouts, how do I control who's going to be on floor one versus floor 10? Um, what times do they come into the buildings? Uh, how do I manage those approvals? So this application was directly born from some of the feedback we were getting from our customers around how do we bring them safely back? You've given us an app to provide information to them, but we need a little bit more. So this is, think of this as perhaps V2 of that. Um, let me switch over to the last slide and then I'll get into the actual demo. Um, the app itself is uh, built around multiple personas. And when I say that, you'll see when I get into the demo, there are actually three different apps. So it's not one power app in Teams, it's a suite of three different apps. The first one, which is the building admin app, which is geared towards your executives, your facilities managers, that's the place where you can go configure a specific building or a facility. And what you're doing is, hey, this building is now online, meaning available for employees to access. You can define which spaces, you know, what floor, how many seats, how many spaces are available for people to reserve. Will that building be, uh, you know, what we call in the tool, we call it unmonitored and monitored. Essentially, that means, is that a restricted access building or an unrestricted access building? And again, I get into the demo, but the idea is, do I check in myself when I get to the site? Or, um, you know, um, do I check in voluntarily? Or will someone in the lobby check to see if I have the right uh, approvals to be on site on that day at that building and check me in from their system? So that's kind of one of the things we'll look at. The two personas in the middle more or less overlap. Essentially, your employee, your end user making that request. I'm going to go ahead and, and keep that aside for the time being. We'll actually do that in the demo. And the last piece, which is the third app, which is our building security app. And that's the essential. The, remember the monitor versus unmonitored comment from earlier. That's where your building security, your building lobby managers, your security officers, they bring up this companion app, validate you are who you say you are, you have the right approvals, scan the QR code that is given to you when you request a reservation and then let you in. 
So that's kind of setting the stage for what the app actually does. But let's go ahead and take a look at behind the scenes on the app. Um, I will put all these links in the chat window here for everyone. And, I'm, and actually, we're going to be publishing more information about it. It is on GitHub. This is hot off the press. Hey, what's on the GitHub? So obviously, the source code goes up there. Uh, there is a detailed deployment guide. So if I were to bring this up, you know, you'll find this detailed deployment guide, step by step screenshots. Most organizations I worked with deploy this app template within 45 minutes. Um, and that's really just making sure I have the right URL to plug in into the admin screen. I have to I have the right team. If I need to create a team, I go create my team, grab that URL, and I'll walk through where that goes. But there is also a detailed getting started guide. Hey, I deployed everything. Now what do I do? Where do I go to define my first building? What are some of the settings that are available? So again, all of those are available to you. So everything I talk, show you today, if it feels like I'm going at a rapid pace, which I am, it feel like I think I have probably 10 minutes overall to do, but a lot of information is here and I'm happy to stay on and answer additional questions. Behind the scenes look, and again, you'll see multiple versions of this, so please ignore that. But the idea is um, you will have three apps showing up in your power apps when you look at it. You've got the building admin app. That's for the admins, the executives to define your buildings. Uh, the building security app, that's the companion app for the security folks to use, scan your QR code and let you in. And this is the main app, which is used by the end user. The way I uh, recommend customers use this is, is for the building security app, and again, you'll see I have three different teams in here. The building security app could easily be pinned. If you've got different building security teams, you can pin them, uh, pin them in the, uh, the channel here, or you can um, target it for that specific set of users and pin it on the left app bar. The building admin app, same thing. For my demo, I'm going to be going ahead and demoing it for help from the, the channel itself. But where I want to start the demo right now is actually the app that I've pinned on the left app bar um, and ignore the V6 next to it. That's just the internal variations that are happening right now. Um, but let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and full screen. So the way that works is when I as a user log in, so this is the end user view. When I as a user log in, I have uh, a few things I can do in the system. Um, I can quickly see uh, what my existing requests are, and I'll show you quickly where that uh, what goes. Um, I can make a new request for building access. We'll go through that process as well. And again, this is where the organization can publish additional guidelines, building opening schedules, safety precautions, uh, PPE needs, anything and everything. And again, you everything you see here is actually a label you can configure. There is an, an Excel file that contains all of the strings, all of the labels. It's really easy for you to go ahead and swap them out. And if you wanted to call it corporate news or latest news or anything else, or didn't want it at all, um, we've given you a, a simple slide or a yes, no flag in the admin tool to go turn it off, and then that would go away. Let's go through the process of doing one. I think that's the best way for me to show you what works here. The first half step that happens in creating a new request is it asks me a bunch of questions. This is what we call the key eligibility questions. Think of this as the gate to the actual request. These questions are configured by you in the admin tool. You can define as many or as few as you want. And if you didn't want them, you have the same slider capability, just turn them off so you didn't mind. So I had a, at least one customer who said, no, I just want them to reserve. I'm not going to get into kind of you know asking any questions. There was another customer that came and said, I may not ask health related question, but I'm going to ask them, are you going to take public transportation into office today? Because I deem that a little bit more risky and I may not allow that today. And so gave you full capability to customize all of these in the admin tool. And we'll quickly take a peek at it uh, depending on how much time we have. Now, obviously, if I say, do you have any symptoms? The system's going to tell me, sorry, you're not eligible to be on site. So for the demo today, in the interest of time, I'm going to go ahead and keep moving and say no to all of those. This is where it shows me kind of my recent building selections. 
But what I want to do is I want to actually go to San Francisco. I'm from San Francisco Bay Area. So I'm going to go ahead and pick the one in uh, California Street. Let me just see that this is an executive meeting. That's why I need to be there. For every building you configure, you can define the eligibility criteria as a message that you can put up here. So you're telling the users, hey, if you want to work out of this building, that's the criteria. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep moving forward. In this case, what I've done is obviously defaulted to the current date. Um, I can say all day or I can say, um, well, maybe I only want to go there for the morning one. And again, these are labels. You could have, we could have said morning 9 to 12, afternoon 2 to 4, evening, you know, again, you get the idea. But the, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and say all day. And now this is where the fun part begins. What I've done in the building access, a building admin uh, section, is I've defined two floors. And for each floor, I've defined a certain set of spaces. So when I pick this and I click on check availability, it checks to see if the floor is, if there is available capacity on that floor. And if it is, it tells me, yes, I can go ahead and reserve that. If there was none, it would basically tell me, hey, you don't have any availability. Actually, it won't even show up in the floor. I take that back. So let's go ahead and hit save and next. Now, in this case, uh, this is the, the demo fund. Um, I am logged in as, you know, as every demo environment is. You can see the credentials here. The mod administrator uh, haven't set up uh, a direct manager for myself in this demo. So it tells me, hey, I can't find the, the approver. I'm just going to send it to the admin team channel. And this is interesting. I think one of the things that happened was there were some customers that came back and said, oh, well, um, that person doesn't have a direct manager right now in the system or we haven't set up everything in AD that works that way. Um, so you can actually set it up and, and again I'll show you given time but in the building admin app you can say for this building the default approval is this person. Very important from a retail scenario when you're in a store and your store employees may not directly report to the store manager then you can pick the store manager or the assistant store manager as the approver for that facility. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and let it go to the team channel, but I could pick a different approver and actually send it to somebody else. Uh, again, this is the functionality you if you didn't want people picking your approvers, there is a lot of configuration uh, aspect to this app, which uh, I would love to get into on a follow. So let's go ahead and, and click that. And in this case, it's going to go through the process, tells me I've created the request. Um, let's go back here, tells me, hey, these are my requests now. Remember that second option here, my request, that's where that's taking me. And now it's telling me, okay, floor one, San Francisco 545. Hey, it tells me it's already approved. Um, and, and when I click on it, it tells me it's auto approved. And so that's another configuration you have in the system. You define which buildings will allow system auto approval based on available occupancy thresholds that you've set. And so if your occupancy threshold was 50%, the for, uh, you were basically are saying, hey, my system will allow uh, auto approvals up to 50%, and then anything else will be manager approved. Um, or you can just bring down the building configuration and change it from 1,000 people if it was the original setup to 500 people. Now, this is my view. Right? Again, r remember when I come in in the morning, um, or actually in this case, this would be on my mobile phone. Remember, pinned apps show up on your mobile devices as well. So I walk into the building, I bring up my app. Um, it shows me that I have a reservation here and um, I can go ahead and click check in and get my work done. Now, what we've done, now this is the, what I'm showing you today is V2 or version two of the building access app. The original V1 was rolled out in June timeframe. We've got several uh, customers that have already rolled it out successfully, have customized it, personalized it, and have been using it for several months now. But there were some capabilities that were requested that we've added. The ability to select a range of dates, ability to do multiple time slots in a day, the ability to do a second check-in uh, or a second eligibility questions verification um, when you check in. So previously I could make a reservation for up, you know, up to X days in advance and, and walk in into the building and check in. But a lot of customers said, hey, but what about the day off? I want them to validate that everything they said with the time of reservation still holds true. So now we have to make the same 
um, selections, uh, I should say the appropriate selection. And actually, because I said, yes, I am sick, it tells me, sorry, you can't be here. And now what will it will do is if I go back here, um, it's going to tell me, hey, your request has been disqualified. Um, let's actually take a step back from here. What I want to do is show you, and in this case, I'm actually just flipping over to my second tab here to show you what the building admin screen looks like. And I think that's pretty much all the time we'll have um, today to look at building admin. Um, so admin is where you would go and define your building. So you saw me pick you know, SF555 California, and there are a few more buildings in here, uh, but if I nail down, this is the one that I was looking at. Um, you see the unmonitored and the monitored labels here. Again, go back to restricted and unrestricted access. It does tell me how many floors or how many areas have been defined and how many seats are available. So that's quickly visible here. Well, we can take a peek under the covers as well. So obviously I can do address and all. Again, why is this important? Um, one, obviously you can display that on the screen for the user, um, but more importantly, there is a Power BI dashboard that comes as part of the solution as well. And these are then used to plot your users. You can say, hey, in this region, X number of users are expected to be on site are on site so there is a lot of reporting that happens behind the scenes which i won't have time to show today um, this is where you make the selection between restricted or unrestricted access the auto approval threshold is interesting and if you use this as a combination with i'll show you the screen first use this in combination with the the floors and the the seating you've set up you've got various way to control your occupancy threshold so first off you can come in here and define hey floor one floor two again in microsoft we have these open spaces zones i could call this and again this is just a label so i could come in here and change this to my open space area or zone one all right it doesn't have to be floor one you can define it any way you want um now once i've done with that um basically the idea was hey if this zone pre-covid supported 150 I can come in and say, hey, there are only 75 spaces based on how facilities have restructured this. Or I could actually go back in here and I say, hey, maybe I'll leave that at 150, but I'll set my occupancy approval threshold to 50%, meaning the first 50% of the seats can be auto approved, system approved based on the occupancy levels. Um, and then maybe I have manager discretion on whether I want to allow people you decide how you want to do this. You can set this up all the way up to 100% or you can say no more auto approvals. We're going to go to the manager one. So you define how you want to work with that. A few other things in the building admin, and I think we are pretty much done from a demo perspective. The safety precautions, this is where you define all the news, um, the, the policies, uh, additional information, your eligibility questions. You saw some of those show up. There are a few in the draft state, so you can actually start creating some, publish the ones or take them off if uh, you don't need them anymore. And then this is really where the, the bulk of the stuff happens. Um, you define how many days in advance the reservations can be made. Um, you define where those messages are going, right? We looked at the, the approval messages coming in. Um, you define what those error messages are going to be. and all those features, the safety precautions, the news, you don't want it, let's turn that off. Uh, the key eligibility questions, no, I just want them to reserve, let's turn them off. And oh, by the way, I really don't want people picking up approvers. That doesn't really work for our organization. All right, let's go ahead and turn them off. And now if I reload my app um, back to uh, the building access screen, um, all those will be gone. I'm going to take a pause here. I think I've shown you quite a bit. Uh, if there are any questions, happy to take, um, happy to respond to them in the chat window as well. Excellent. Thanks, Pavan. Uh, really great stuff. Um, and, and this is an awesome example of the power of those Microsoft Teams app templates. They are ready to go in production usage and they really demonstrate the best practices. Uh, so really, really polished stuff. And also I like the fact that it's demonstrating the power platform capabilities in Microsoft Teams because that is super, super powerful platform as well. So really, really great, great stuff. Absolutely. Mm -hmm.